bolts are looking a little low. We got him. Last week was uh, interesting. We were, we were all over the place, a whole bunch of things kind of going on and uh, lots of little things going wrong. But we got stuff done. We got our Enhydrus unit going <coughs> and we just got started. And then it rained on Saturday. So it's Monday morning. And I think these valves are all, that one's open. So we got the Enhydrus unit going, uh, and we've got uh, probably about, about 10 days worth of Enhydrus in. So uh, yeah, and uh, we also got going with combining corn, moving some animals around, and uh, yeah, it was a good week. It just things were taking longer than what we thought they should. So. As you can see, our mid-harvest bench is getting full again, so if we get the guys going, I'm going to spend a bit of time cleaning up here again. But uh, this morning, we're going to do a quick grease job here and get this combine ready to roll for the day. Okay, well, I finished that first field. That was 220 acres, and we're moved on to the next field, which is 160 acres. And it seems to be working pretty good. We've got enough moisture for the gas to attach itself to. Yeah, we're not too wet, and we're definitely, well, yeah, we're definitely not too wet, and we're not too dry. I've got this field all set up. I've got my headlands all done. Um, we've actually got a funeral. Our neighbor had a brain aneurysm uh, a week ago yesterday, and she did not make it, 60 years old. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, a funeral to go to this afternoon, and uh, Terry's gonna come out and start operating this uh, middle of the afternoon, and he'll keep on in hydrazine and uh, we're gonna do stuff around the dryer. I got a lot of things that uh, need to get done. The guys have been combining corn 
for Polarda. Uh, that's the dairy operation that uh, they do our chopping. We've got roughly 900 acres of custom combine corn to do for them. And Arch and Dylan, my nephew, were going on Saturday and they did roughly 200 acres. Uh, sorry, they did about 160 acres in and they've done about 60 acres-ish now already. So that's coming along good. Um, so we, we still have another roughly 700 acres to go. And then we also have we also have our own corn that we got to do. So we're hoping that we can get into that later tomorrow slash Wednesday. The, they're wanting their corn for high moisture. So it's got to be in that 25-ish percent, 25 to 30 percent. And it's beautiful outside right now. And the more our corn can naturally dry down, the cheaper it costs us for propane and the faster we can get it off. So that's our hopes. I know we have lots of neighbors all around us. They've combined all their corn. Um, that's the neighboring colony, Wingham, Wingham Colony. Um, <clears throat> And a lot of their corn was anywhere from 17 to 22 percent from what we're being told so i'm doubting ours is going to be that dry but we will see i love this time of year but there's also lots of stress because we have lots of things that need to get done and uh that is a little stressful in the sense of uh winter when winter comes it frees up stuff we got cattle that we need to move home. We got water lines that need to get pushed in and drinkers set up. And uh, it's gonna be a busy uh, second half of October. But that's how it is. Let's see what we can get done. And uh, yeah, hopefully it all comes together. Okay, so we got Arch and Dylan are out. Uh, combine, we'll see them here shortly. What I'm doing though is I'm running to the neighbor's fields here. We got three more fields I just want to grab cobs off of. And I'm just trying to think of where I want to go and grab four random cobs. So this is <laughs> what I'm trying to do is give myself the best example as to what we're going to be for moisture when we get in here because what we're looking for is uh what we're looking for is the driest fields because they're going to have too much corn to have it all uh oh well that's a funny ha huh? i was so determined to get <laughs> safety 101 Put it in park before you take off. Anyway, long story short, long story short. Okay, so what we are doing, truck is stopped now. Uh, what I'm doing is the guys at, at Halarda here, they are gonna have more corn than what they want for high moisture. So we are gonna have to dry some corn. So the plan is to try to find the driest fields so that less to dry time wise and that kind of thing so i'm just trying to grab random uh four cobs just to give us a ballpark as to where this field is at and we're going to do that to the three remaining fields and we'll, we'll go from there so i'm going to walk in four rows two three four and we're going to go right here so one two Three and four. So this should give me that one. This should give me an idea on this field. And the reason I'm doing this again is I did these the other day, and just in appearance, this particular field I'm on right now looks. Uh, drier than some of the other ones and yet it was a lot wetter so 
kind of doesn't make any sense. So, where the heck did my calves go? I'm trying to hold too many things at the same time. So here's one. Two. Three. Leave all this other stuff. Go here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these all home, I'll do hand samples, and uh, I'm going to do that, for, do that for the other two fields, and then uh, have a better idea. So okay, so I'm just going to pull into here where the guys are combining, and we'll see how we're doing here. Got the truck out here also. That's good. So this field, the uh, dairy had already uh, done some chopping, and we're just kind of doing the finishing touches on it. So. This one was testing right around 30-ish, I think, which is right in the perfect range of where they want to be. So they're pretty happy with that. in the camera but it, the, the plants have more of a green tinge to them so that's where I'm just a little bit second guessing that this is drier than the first field that I did so anyway what I'm gonna do is run in here and grab um, yeah, and grab a couple more cobs and uh, then we're gonna head back and do some testing okay so I got those four cobs as you can see driving down here this I mean, it always is the nicest in the middle of the field. So I'm assuming once we get into those other ones, it'll be similar to what we're in here right now and what we've been in. This corn is really, really quite nice and considering the kind of summer we've had. And uh, in talking to the guys, this actually field intrigues me a lot because this is a variety I used to grow an awful lot of and then for one reason or another, I'm going to quit. But just cob size, plant height, everything in this field is very beautiful and I'm kind of looking forward to my own farming as to how this one's going to go because I might have to try this one again. I like learning from neighbors. corn the easier this becomes it uh, and that 
is true for the Columbine too. Basically what I'm just doing is doing a very, very slow-mo uh, version of what the Columbine does, one cob at a time. But yeah, and then it's taking me minutes to do these. So, but now this is, this is a sample. Very first one that I did. And I'm probably gonna have to do a couple tests here. Because I've got that much. We'll quickly to see. Enjoys about this kind of a job as it tends to make a mess wherever you are. So okay. We're gonna see what the first one does. Twenty-six. Okay, so that's substantially better than the last time that I did this. Okay, so this is the second field which I expected, or which was the driest in the bunch. And to be honest, just by how it's rolling off, it is rolling off way easier than the other one did. So it is literally, I put my hand squeeze and twist and it's just falling off. That takes no time. Okay. Okay, so the second sample goes in. And this one, like I said, I'm hoping is drier, but we'll see. Oh, I gotta remove this, right. Seventeen point six. That is significantly drier. Okay, just dropped the service truck off out here, and Peter and I are going to head back. We've got a funeral to go to today, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. Arch and Dylan are actually going to stay going, just to try to keep the combine going, but uh, that's where we're at. So we should be back here in a couple hours, and by then they might even have this field done by the look of it. So. See how it goes. Okay, so I am back from the funeral and Heather had made suppers for everybody. So I had the pretty easy job of just making sure everybody gets something. So I'm gonna start here with Terry, get him his supper, and then make my rounds and get everybody else theirs. It. I'm just the delivery boy. Um, what do you want to drink? Water, Coke? Uh, Coke is great. Yeah, Coke water. You want one of each? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll go check and I'll be right back. Okay. Well, he's getting himself settled in the supper. He just wanted to know how full his tank is. So. Go for a quick jaunt here. Boy, that field's working out beautiful. A little lumpy here, but. For the most part, they are pretty nice. This is a job I used to do an awful lot of, but in the last few years, you know, we're sitting about 10%. Probably got enough for about one more up and down, I'm gonna guess. So, anyway, anyway, I used to do a lot of this. In fact, we used to. Dad and I, back in the day, used to do up to 7,000 acres of custom hydrosing, but uh, not anymore. 